How's it going? Dave from Comic Book Investments. So, last time I did a video on some things I got from eBay, and so this time, I'm doing another video. This kind of has a little theme going for it, and one other one, not really. But uh, I spent about a little over $11,000 on these three packages right here, and we'll just go through them. Um, yeah. So let's see what we got here. Oh, let's go through this first box. There we go. Trying to make sure you guys can see it. I always love the different packagings people put them in. And here we go. We got a box. A little bit of bubble wrap, and that is it. Um, the cardboard looks pretty dinged up, as you can see right up there um, in the corners. Not sure if that's how the cardboard was beforehand. Okay, the tape is kind of con loose. There's some tape down here. I'm just like lifting up and just tearing, cutting the tape, not to cut the book. All right, we got a giant size X Men number one that is wrapped in tons and tons of plastic. It's like, why don't you just put it in a better box? Why are you? I just love the ones that they just tape every little thing. And it's like, okay, tape is cool and all, but um, how about you just put it in a better box next time? It's in like a pretty hard plastic thing. Oh my gosh, so much plastic. This is going to take me all day. It's like tape upon tape and plastic. That's like. Oh my God. There we go. Come on now. Okay. Oh, this, this, man, there's. It's just like every time I think I got it open, it's just like. Oh, nope, another rung of plastic tape down. Finally. Hopefully. There we go. Yay. I mean, it's in a Mylar. Uh, makes it look all nice. My eyes always make uh, books look nice. Uh, but then it's in plastic, uh, a bag and back board as well. Um, and of course the back's all really taped up with like packing tape, not just like scotch tape. And every time you try to take that stuff up, it usually just rips the plastic. Well, I'll put this in a new bag and back board anyways. Yeah, yep, I tried to take it off and just ripped it anyways. So... And I usually always wash my hands before I deal with books. Just get rid of the oils and stuff. Alright, so here we go. Giant size X-Men number one. And this is pretty, pretty nice. Pretty nice. Uh, it's got some thumbprints up by Wolverine. Um, but yeah. Doesn't look like any restoration. That's the big, the big thing. Slightly tanned cover, a little bit. A little water stain. Okay. Um, pretty good actually. Pretty good. 
put it back in this worthless bag. I always try to take off all the tape when dealing with comic books because you never know, it could just stick to it. Put it back in here. <clears throat> and then, um, is this, no, I want this one. All right, I think this is the one I want, right? Hopefully, maybe it's this one, this one. All right. Here is another package. This one, a little damaged, but nothing, just a little crushed, as you can see up here. Um, this sticky stuff right here that they ship in the post office is not very good, it's terrible. So always make sure you tape your boxes closed because this one was even coming up. All right, so no real packing material other than Someone made a little cardboard insert. All right, easy to get out though, this in this little manila envelope. In between pieces of cardboard, good. Very well packed. And this one is another giant size X-Men number one. Now this one, see? So as you can see, there's tape on the back, right? That's how it should be. Just a nice little piece of tape. I do it vertical, you can do it horizontal. What I do always, take off the tape. I usually throw it away. But if you wanna keep it, put it on side. I cannot tell you in the beginning how many times I just untaped it and left the tape on the bag, pulled the tape out, and the, the tape got stuck to the book putting back in. It's not so dangerous on newer books because they have a more glossy feel, but you do it to a, a Silver Age. Ooh. Golden Age is a little tougher, but a Silver Age, it's going to get you those tape pulls. And the tape pull is basically where the tape sticks to it. You try to pull it off, it pulls a little bit of the cover off. I remember my dad telling me he had a, what was it? I think it was a Fantasy 15. And he was dealing, going over and dealing with a guy, and um, it just stuck to it. You know, the tape stuck to it, and then tried to get it off, and some of the cover came off. I remember another time, um, I believe he said it was Vincent from uh, Comic Connect. But this is years ago, before they were Comic Connect, when they were Metropolis. They're still in Metropolis. Years and years ago. And they're all looking at a book, and it was a, I think it was... Uh, world's best was it was it as i was called i'm blanking on name it it was world's finest number one but it was called world's best comics and then it switched to world's finest number two i think it was something like that or maybe it was a new york's world fair 1939 anyways they had it and vincent had it and it was like it, it was one of the nicest copies and he dropped it and it Ding the edge. I mean, this was in like the 80s or 90s when it wasn't worth as much um, as it is today. Um, but all right. Ooh, eh. Okay, this one right here. Super, super, super nice. Um, let me check for restoration. Looks like there's slight staining. Um, pages are really, really, really nice. I mean, I wish I had another camera so you could see kind of like what I see. No inside cover tanning. Pages are nice. Um, it just has a couple little bit of staining spots. But yeah, it's got a little bit of staining, like tiny little dots of staining. Um, no fingerprints, which is nice. This is really nice, by the way. Um, 
Here, I'll show it a closer look. Yeah, so very, very nice. This is very, very, very high grade. I am going to guess, I mean, it's that crease on the side of the spine. It depends how much they they knock it for that crease on the spine. Like it's literally on the spine. It's part of the spine. And I don't know how they will knock that down. There's also some creasing on the back near the spine as well. Hard to say, but I will say this. I think that creasing will be fine. I will say it's at least a 9.0. Possibly a 9.2. Yeah. I paid seven grand for this. So, like I said, it all depends on that crease down there, um, how they're going to grade it. But, with the little staining and stuff, I mean, if it comes back a 9.0, most recent 9.0 sold for about 8900 You got grading fees, which will be, was it, it's walkthrough, so 3% of, I think it's, is it 3% or I'm insane? I don't know. I'm blanking right now. But you got to walk through, cost me couple hundred bucks and then eBay fees. Um, on average though, uh, 9.0 is gonna be around 10. So, if you got 10, you got about maybe four or 500 bucks in grading fees. Um, then you got, including shipping and all that stuff. And then you got another 15% in selling fees roughly. It's like 13, a little more. So you're looking about another thousand, let's put a pound, thousand, maybe a little like 1300, so maybe almost, maybe like 50, anywhere from like around maybe 1700 in fees for this book. So that would, if it comes back a 9 0, which it depends on this crease, right? If this crease isn't that big of a deal, because it is kind of part of the spine, but there is a crease there. I don't know how they'll grade it, to be honest. Um, but if it comes back a 9-0, I'll make a little bit of money. Um, if it comes back a 9-2, I'll make a little more money. If it comes back 8-5, I lost money. So it's a gamble, right? Um, this other one has all that thumb printing. You know, I pay about a little over three for this. I'm assuming that I could probably get after fees and everything like that, you know, make a couple hundred bucks. Last box. This one, I'm just gonna rip. Uh, Packing a little better. Got what is it, let me see that. Got some bubble wrap and some paper towels. Here we go. Since the last one had an Albedo two, Albedo three. Bought this nine six. Um, I bought this for a record price, so did not get a deal on this. Um, but I think it's worth more. I had a nine eight of this, and I stupidly sold it like six months ago. I wish I would have kept it um, because I was into it for like nothing, and we and we sold it for a ton. Um, just seeing, there's that little, 
Maybe. I mean, it's really nice. I mean, could get a 9.8. It's on that cusp. Um, but yeah, I mean, I paid a record price for this, but I think this book was go up. I mean, I told you in my spec videos, I've said in pretty much every video um, that, you know, I buy that kind of stuff, even if it's at top dollar, that I think in the future it will be worth more. Um, and so that's the type of book I hold back. I will probably be holding back these giant size X-Men as well. Uh, if you see my other videos, I probably had like 10, I think. In that video, I'm up to like 15, 16, somewhere in there. Um, and I'm just holding them back. I don't see a reason to let them go at this point. Um, I, I've seen that the sales have dipped a little bit. So if I was going to sell them, I should have sold them like last month. Um, but I think they will still go up. I think the... I'm looking at the overall market. It's, there's not a dip overall. It's just in certain books, you know, like Giant Size, X-Men Ones have dipped a little bit. But I think that they'll, you know, they might slow down a little bit and then they'll come right back. Um, especially as they're closer to an X-Men movie, some kind of announcement, all that kind of stuff. So hopefully they do that soon, like within a year um, or two. Is probably more likely. But yeah, uh, it was pretty good. I did pretty well, um, I think, anyways. Um, I'm pretty happy. They all don't have any restoration, which is great. I don't have to deal with returning. I'm like, not everything works out well, though. I'm currently dealing with this. I bought from one seller on eBay, I bought a bunch of comic books, very high end comic books, like World by Night 32, uh, Turtles 1, second printing and third printing, an error. Turtles number uh, four, um, and a couple other books, and the total was like six grand, and um, and so you can't do anything, right? You can't open a case or anything until the time has passed, right? So whenever you buy something on eBay, it says you should have your item by X date, right? And so you have to wait until that date, like. And I saw no tracking uploaded. I'm like, okay, why isn't there tracking? emailed the guy or girl, whoever it is, um, never responded. So I can't do anything about it. So I have to wait. So all of a sudden, you know, the day has passed when it was supposed to be delivered to me. What do I have? Nothing. So then I have to open the case and then I'm like, where's the books? I want the books, that kind of stuff. Then I have to allow like a couple business days for them to respond. And then they don't respond. Then I have to wait a little bit and it'll say like down below, you can open you can ask eBay to step in at this date. And that's like usually like a week or so later. So I had to wait a couple, whatever it was, like a week or so later, open the case. Then I have to wait for them to approve it. They approved the smaller item ones, like the ones that are like a couple hundred bucks, um, pretty quick for a refund. But the bigger ones, they have to wait. I still don't have my refund. Basically, I had five grand tied up with this guy for over a month. And that means like five grand I can't spend on other books, five grand uh, it's just tied up for no reason, just because the person didn't send the books, never respond to any of my emails. Like I even emailed him before to ask him specific questions about the turtle stuff and he responded, but then as soon as I bought him, zero communication. It's just annoying. Um, like, thankfully, I know in the end I'll, I should get my money back, but when it's dealing with high ticket items, it's like uh, you call in and like, oh, well, this is the high value item. So we have to send you to another person. And then that other person's like never there. Or who knows what's going on? And it's like, oh, yeah, I see what's going on. Well, we have to wait a certain number of days. And then we have to get clearance. And it has to go on this person's desk, this person's desk to make sure. This is, uh, this is annoying. So it takes forever. So I still don't have the money. I probably will get the return, like the refund in like another week. But at that point, it'll be over a month. Over a month, all this money tied up for nothing, right? And uh, it's super annoying, um, especially like when you need the money to pay for other things. Like, thankfully, I'm in an okay financial spot where it's not devastating, but I've been in spots where I bought something for like like a collection off eBay. It was like either like 10 or 12 grand. The person never sent it. And literally, that just like stopped us from buying anything because... It was all tied up in this collection expecting to get in and, you know, it just never came. And 
oh, I'm sorry, uh, I forgot, or uh, I've been, uh, I was sick, or who knows what. Or, um, they always try the sympathy route. Oh, uh, oh, I was in the hospital, or m- my mom was in the hospital, or someone I know was in there. Oh, I've had all these medical bills, or something like that. And it's like, okay, like. I don't know what you want me to say. You want me to say, like, I'm so sorry. Keep the books and keep the money? No, just send the books. Like, I know you're watching it because it's not like you're listing stuff every day. I know it's important to you, especially when you see yourself for thousands and thousands of dollars. You're probably, like, looking at eBay every five seconds. Oh, it's getting a minute closer, a minute closer. Uh, let's see. Oh, it went up another $500. Yeah, I know. You're watching it. Yeah, it's not like, oh, my gosh. Uh, someone got sick in my family, so I forgot everything and I'm not paying attention to anything else in the world. Had no idea that I listed like a twelve thousand dollar comic collection that was up to like eight thousand dollars yesterday. You know, it's not like it goes from a dollar to instantly twelve thousand dollars at the last second. So sorry, ranting. Uh, but anyways, yeah. I uh, hope you like that kind of stuff. I thought it was kind of cool that I got two in. I don't normally get two in. I do not normally get. Yeah, there I am, like every week getting like two giant size X Men's in super high grade. Now, I just happen to, like, I might get maybe one in a month, maybe, probably one in more of like every two months is probably more realistic. Um, but yeah, and I just thought this was kind of cool because I got two in the same time, like, literally the exact same time. Um, and that Albedo number three because I had Albedo number two last time. Um, so yeah, I hope you like this kind of stuff. If you do, please think about subscribing. That helps me out, helps this channel out. If you are subscribed, thank you. As always, link to my website down below. That's collectorscomics.com where I have most of this stuff that I'm willing to sell, not these giant size x uh, uh for sale. and Or the Albedo 2, that's not for sale either. <laughs> or the three that I just got in. But the other stuff. Um, yeah, the other stuff I, I have for sale, um, and and if you're into music, check out my music. Link in the description below. Um, all right, have a good weekend.